What's happening guys, Nordic Warrior here, so yeah, this Devin Haney versus George Cambosos, undisputed fight that's coming up later in the week, seems to be a bit of a hot topic right now, so yeah, that seems to be the fight that everybody's talking about. I wasn't expecting this fight to be as um, anticipated by, by as many people as it is, you know, because me personally, as soon as I heard that this fight was in talks, I personally viewed this fight as a mismatch. And it doesn't really intrigue me at all. Um, I don't give George Cambosos much of a chance. I think Devin Haney is going to win the fight convincingly on points. From, from just a stylistic point of view, even ignoring politics and just looking at this fight objectively, I, I don't see any way that George Cambosos realistically wins. Like I don't see anything he brings to the table that gives him an advantage over Devin Haney. I just don't see it. So, I mean, I, I don't really feel like giving a full technical breakdown of the fight, because to be honest, I, like, like I said, the, the fight's pretty standard to me. I think it's going to be... I'm, I'm pretty confident that the, the result of the fight is going to be a wide, unanimous decision for Devin Haney. I think that's going to be the result of the fight, either way. But what I wanted to talk about is how this fight, to me, stands as another prime example of... Just the absolute state of boxing fans in general. Sorry about that. One second. Yeah, the, the absolute state of boxing fans in general. About how they have such short memories. They are very, very short-sighted. And they're very reactionary. And very inconsistent. And I'm sick of repeating myself. But that really is the case. It, they, this is just what I see. Uh, boxing fans really don't have a standard to stick to. So... Going into the George Cambosos Tiafima Lopez fight, which was of course George Cambosos' last fight, and it was his um, career defining victory. Going into that fight, what was the narrative on George Cambosos? Who was he as a fighter? You know, who what did we know him to be? So George Cambosos going into that fight was your typical generic standard IBF bum mandatory, right? That's what he was, okay? He was According to most of you guys, right, going into that fight, he was Dominic Wade. He was Camel Zerometa. He was Jojo Dan. He was Kevin Bizier. He was one of those guys, right? He was your, your standard, generic, by the books, IBF mandatory. You know, he was a guy who went life and death with the likes of a shot Mickey Bay, right? a guy who was never that good in his prime, okay? He. Almost got dropped by a completely shot to pieces, feather fisted at lightweight at least, Lee Selby. You know, a guy whose better days were years earlier in the featherweight division. I mean, that guy, <laughs> not really known as a puncher at lightweight, is he? And not really proven at world level at lightweight. Yet, George Cambosis went 12 rounds with the guy. It was a very close fight. It was a split decision. He almost got dropped in the fight, okay? This is the. This is the same Lee Selby that got absolutely blown away in his last fight by some prospect who, prior to fighting George Cambosos, got a gift decision over a shot washed up to shit Ricky Burns. I literally, go and watch that fight. Ricky Burns did a better job, in my opinion, against, against Lee Selby than Cambosos did. He didn't nearly get dropped, did he? You know, he wasn't getting backed up. And having scary moments, was he? You know, there was never a moment in that fight where you thought Ricky was going to get knocked spark out. No, he was the aggressor in that fight. He was actually walking through Selby's punches. And he looked like the bigger puncher of the two. He looked like the stronger and more durable. But in the Cambosis fight, it was Cambosis to me who had to sort of technically figure his way through that fight, wasn't it? You know, he had to fiddle and maul his way to victory against the guy who's supposedly not a puncher and who's completely shot so again look the reason i'm bringing all this up is that nobody really thought much of george cambosos did they did, did they let's be honest i mean we saw how he looked in that fight uh, we saw how he looked in, in against mickey bay you saw that he had back-to-back -back split decision wins where he you know they could have easily taken the wins off him i'm not saying that he didn't deserve the victories he certainly did but nobody would have really argued had it gone the other way, you know, it was those kind of fights, 
So going into the Tiafima Lopez fight, that's how people saw it, right? That he was just going to get smashed. He was a complete bum. He was nobody, right? We're never going to hear about him again when he gets knocked out by the great Tiafima Lopez. Then, of course, Tiafima Lopez gets completely exposed in the fight, you know, gets dropped, um, you know, has to go to war with this guy and loses the fight by a, a close split decision, a competitive but a clear win for Cambosas, right? And because all these people who are so reactionary and, and don't have a consistent standard, because they blew so much smoke up of Tiafimo Lopez's arse after that pathetic, obvious fixed fight with Lomachenko. Like, if you don't know that was a fixed fight, I, I almost don't even know... I, I don't know what to tell you, okay? I've, I've ranted about that too much in the past. I've got nothing else to say about it. That was one of the most obvious, predetermined, staged outcomes to a fight that I've ever seen in my life. But I digress. So, because so many people blew so much smoke off that up that bum's arse, you know, that fraud, before the Cambosas fight, and, and completely overestimated him, that's got people now doing the same thing to Cambosos. People are blowing smoke up his arse. People are... People who were calling him a bum just five months ago and saying that he doesn't belong in the ring with any world champion and he doesn't deserve a world title shot because he's shit and because he struggled with Lee Selby and Mickey Bay. They, these same people are now saying that Cambosos is the number one lightweight. And they're picking him to not only beat Devin Haney, they're picking him to knock Devin Haney out. They're talking about Devin Haney struggled with Linares. Guys, Jorge Linares, I'm telling you guys right now, Jorge Linares would knock George Cambosos out cold. He you, Put George Cambosos in the ring with Jorge Linares, and let's see what happens in that fight. Okay? Zawa Abdelayev would beat the shit out of George Cambosos. I'm not kidding. Go and watch Zara Abdelayev's last fight. Look at how he's looked since his defeat to Devin Haney, assuming that was a real fight. All right, very good fighter. Good stamina, good chin, good boxing fundamentals, good power. Carries his power late, you know, took Linares out in the 12th round. Right? Who, who predicted that right? <laughs> Is all I'm saying, you know, be, be consistent. And these fights are a little bit more predictable than you might think. Very good fighter, okay? What does George Cambosos bring to the table that Devin Haney hasn't already dealt with? Okay, what what does he bring to the table that that last guy that Haney fought hadn't dealt with before? I, I mean, I look at Cambosos, I see one of the most basic rudimentary fighters I see. All because he beat that fraud, Teofimo Lopez, who I told you guys from day one was a fraud. Right, go and look at my old videos. I never thought much of Teofimo Lopez. I never rated him. Told you guys. But because a lot, unlike a lot of you guys who were scared to call that Lomachenko fight for what it was. Because you didn't want to get called an Eastern European fanboy. And you didn't want to get called biased and salty and, and, and whatever. You, you didn't want to get called a casual. You, you didn't want to put the actual casuals off from watching your channel or from agreeing with you and giving you validation. No, I called that fight what it was from day one. It was a fix. It was a blatant, obvious, fixed fight. Okay, and, and there were people out there dropping hints before the fight that it might be, you know. It was obvious what happened there. And another thing, the elephant in the room with the Devin Haney situation, I'm seeing people who I know, I know damn well, I know that these people are knowledgeable boxing fans and not only are they knowledgeable about the sport, but they understand boxing politics on a level that casual fans don't. Why are some of these people who I know understand politics, why are they saying that Devin Haney can't get a decision because the fight's in Australia? And why, are, why am I hearing things? And I think, I listened to a video earlier today, but I think Precise made a video about this. And I think Delboy might have mentioned it too. The, the only two people in the YTBC who I've seen mention this in videos, are Delboy and Precise off the top of my head. Why are people ignoring the fact that Devin Haney has signed with top rank? Correct me if I'm wrong, but this is a top rank card, right? And Tiafima Lopez was of course a top rank fighter, but he left top rank to fight Cambosos, right? As far as I know, Cambosos doesn't have any ties to top rank at all, does he? 
And and in regards to Devin Haney, yeah, he's been fighting on the zone. He's been affiliated with Matchroom, but he's only been with them on a fight by fight basis. He's not tied and uh, committed to any one promoter. So the fact that he's signed a multiple fight deal now with Bob Arum and Top Rank. <laughs> You, you think that they don't want a return on that investment? You think they don't have an option on Devin Haney should he win? You think that they don't want to... You know, surely top rank want options on Devin Haney, all right? Surely they've got plans for him. They're not going to they're not gonna sign him to a multiple fight agreement just to send him over to Australia to lose to a guy that they don't even work with, a guy they don't even promote, all right? Isn't George Cambosos promoted by Lou DiBella, who nobody really is interested in anymore. You know, he, he hasn't been a, a big promoter in many years. He's never been a big promoter in America, but, you know, he was just your average type of promoter. You know, worked with guys like um, Jermaine Taylor, and, you know, he worked with Wilder for a while. And, you know, he, he's, he's promoted fighters over the years, don't get me wrong, but he's never been one of the big ones, has he? Like, he's never been a Bob Arum. He's never been an Al Heyman. He's never been an Oscar De La Hoya or one of these guys. You know, he's never been one of the big shots in the whole American boxing scene, has he? So, and and again, George Cambosos is Australian. So even if even if he did have a bit of connections there, even if he did have some power, it's not as if he would put any stock into George Cambosos, would he? Again, like like I said, the guy's Australian. The fight's in Australia because he's the champion, right? Devin Haney's got no choice. Because Devin Haney isn't bringing anything to the table, his title's not on the line, and Cambosis is the guy who's got all the belts, so obviously he's capitalising on it, right? He's going to get the lion's share of the money, and he's going to get to fight at home. It's going to be good for him that in that sense. That's not going to favour him politically, alright? Nobody in Australia gives a shit about boxing. Since when was boxing a thing in Australia? All right, it, 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 It's never been... Australia's never really been a hotbed, has it, for boxing? Yeah, they've, they've had some big events, Anthony Mundine and whatnot, but, but it's never been, you know, it's never really been a marquee sport over there, has it? So, again, th this idea that Devin Haney's going over to Australia and he can't get a decision, when more, more than likely the, the judges are going to be American, right? They're going to be appointed by the sanctioning bodies. So, in, in what way does the Australian boxing fraternity have any say on what the outcome of the fight's going to be. That doesn't make any sense. So it, it winds me up when I see these comments of people saying, Devin Haney's a road warrior because he's going to Australia and he's going he's to have to knock him out to win. Like, you guys know better than that, okay? You know better that when it comes to fighting in a place like Australia or a place like Germany or a place like Russia or any any of these any of these entities outside of the Western boxing realm, you know, fighting in America or the UK, you fight in any of these places, you're not going to get robbed, okay, like, th th the boxing establishment doesn't work like that, okay, like I said, the sanctioning bodies are going to be the ones running the show, some of you are going to say, well, why did Manny Pacquiao get screwed over, at, you know, for the Jeff Horn fight in, in Australia, that, that had nothing to do with Australia, that had nothing to do with Jeff Horn being Australian, the judges, the judges weren't Australian, were they? Right, they had no ties whatsoever to the Australian boxing fraternity. Right, they were they were WBO appointed judges. Right, the WBO of course has close ties to Bob Arum. So, yeah, this idea that Devin Haney can't get a decision in Australia, you guys know better. This idea that he's somehow a road warrior for fighting in Australia and he's he's going to fight for the undisputed title in Australia. I'm telling you right now, he's going to win that fight. We're never going to hear the end of it. The past ten years. I mean, the next 10 years, they're going to talk about Haney as a road warrior as he fights the rest of his fights in America. He has no choice but to fight in Australia because, because Cambosos is the champion, okay? Cambosos has fought on the road in his last few fights, okay? He's accumulated all the titles now, right? Picking them all up against, against that fraud Tiafima Lopez. And now he wants to get paid. He wants to bring in the crowd. He wants to have a a big homecoming fight, and he wants to be handsomely rewarded for the beating he's about to take, so, <laughs> yeah, man, this fight's a mismatch, it it, it absolutely reeks of just a setup. Um, it has fix written all over it, and, and by fix, I'm talking about 
the judges are obviously going to favour Devin Haney because he's the top ranked fighter. You know, not only is he the top ranked fighter, but he's the guy who the sanctioning bodies have had some sort of vested interest, especially the WBC. We know that the WBC have pulled several strings to protect Devin Haney over the years. In fact, Mauricio Suleiman himself even admitted in an interview with Bill Haney, Mauricio Suleiman, the president of the WBC, admitted that the WBC have supported Devin Haney from the amateurs. Now, now make of, make of that what you will. Right? What, what does he mean, we've supported Devin Haney from the amateurs. Right, how, how does a how does a professional governing body, right, a professional sanctioning body, I mean, how do they support a fighter from the amateurs? What do they sponsor him? Do they get him certain events? Do they get him ranked in a certain position where he can fight for their title? You know, Devin Haney fighting in Mexico and um, eventually fighting for the title in America, the, the the interim title, whatever it was, the regular title. Do, do, do you not realise that that was all by design? Do you not think that the WBC have invested something in this kid? And clearly, the, the, the comparisons to Floyd Mayweather are no accident, okay? What's going on with Devin Haney right now, to me, uh, the, 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 the way that boxing fans, and, and even knowledgeable boxing fans on here, knowledgeable content creators also, not just fans, content creators have been turning a blind eye to what's clearly going on in this situation and refusing to acknowledge what's going on, okay? There's no way they're going to rob Devin Haney. That's not going to happen, okay? Like I said, that that's not how boxing works, all right? It's not you're fighting in another guy's home country. Yeah, with all else being equal, that might, that might subliminally kind of convince the judges to give the home guy the decision. But when you've got a promoter who's promoting the traveling fighter and sanctioning bodies who appoint the judges and refs for the fights, clearly supporting one guy, clearly supporting the travelling fighter, you're going to get a situation where the people of Australia in the crowd cheering for Cambosa, who's not even a big name over there, by the way, it's not going to matter. So, yeah, I see this as a wide unanimous decision for Devin Haney. I figured I'd just have a quick rant about it because it annoys me. It really does, the fact that people just turn a blind eye to this stuff. To me, this fight's a mismatch, and Devin Haney's going to school Cambosos. God bless.